afternoon, boys and girls, and welcome back to this very special Wednesday afternoon's edition of the Pioneer Bible Club. And we are delighted that you're with us today and thrilled about all that we'll be a part of. And a very special friend of mine will be teaching the lesson today, and I'm so glad that he's going to be joining us. So before we go any further and, and jump right into this exciting club, let's begin with a word of prayer and ask God to speak to our hearts. Shall we pray together? Heavenly Father, we love Thee and thank Thee for the grace that is greater than all our sins. And we come to Thee in the, in the name of Jesus, our Savior, and ask, Lord, Thy blessing upon this club. We ask of Thee, Lord, work in the hearts of these children. We pray that their hearts might be softened and their minds might be opened, and that this would be the glad day of salvation for another one of these dear children. Lord, we thank Thee for what we've been studying, and we pray that today's lesson would be especially meaningful to all who are listening. Prepare us for it, we ask, in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Okay, boys and girls, let's stand up together, shall we? And uh, let's sing together some songs of joy. Welcome to Songs of Joy. Let's start off today by singing Standing on the Promises. Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Well, hello again, children. Now, today, to learn about what our God is able to do for us, again, I've got three pictures for you, and I want to see if you can take these three clues and you can guess and see what we're talking about today. So, clue number one, we've got a bicycle with some of those little training wheels on it. Uh, some of you might have a bicycle that way. Raise your hand if you've got a bicycle that way. Oh, that's lovely. They're good to help you, aren't they? So, a bicycle with training wheels, that's our first one. And for our second one, we've got this bridge with a guardrail on it. So, there's a guardrail on a bridge. Okay, that's the second one. And the third one that we have is this climbing harness. Do you see the picture there? There's a climber, and the climber's got a climbing harness on. All right, so there's our three clues, a bicycle with training wheels, a handrail on a bridge, safety rail, and then the third one, a climbing harness for a climber. Now, all three of those things are designed to keep you from doing what? Oh, one or two of you said it. That's right, to keep you from falling. They keep you from falling. And that's exactly what our God is able to do. I'd like to read for you a few verses out of Jude. Jude verse 24 says this, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. And these verses... Jude is writing to these other Christians, these other believers, and he says, God is able to keep you from falling. And that's truth. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, 
if you've believed in him and trusted in him, God is able to keep you from falling. You know, sometimes people have this fear. They have this fear that if they believe on the Lord Jesus, that if they were to become a Christian, they're afraid that they'll never be able to live the Christian life. They're afraid they'll always be making mistakes and they'll always be sinning and they'll always be falling and doing the wrong thing. But it's not something that you and I ought to be afraid of. Do you know why? God is able to keep you from falling. And the very same God who saved you and forgave you of your sins is the same God who can keep you and keep you safe and keep you from falling and keep you as the right Christian as you ought to be. So the next time you see a bicycle going along with some of those training wheels on there, or the next time maybe you're holding onto a handrail or a guardrail or a safety rail or anything else that's designed to keep you from falling, you can remember that our God is able to keep you from falling. everybody, it's time for our memory verse again and we're going to start by going over everything that you've remembered just as we usually do in Romans chapter 1 and verse 17. And we've got a few more actions to add to the end and a, and a little bit to learn about the very end. So I hope you're with us. Stand up where you are and all you all to join in as best as you can in the first part of this. Are you ready? Yes. Three, two, one. Romans, Romans chapter, chapter 1 verse 17. 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, Romans chapter 1 verse 17. Very good. Very good. Now you guys have been working very hard to memorize this verse. But we are coming now to the very last part. And I want you to notice here what it says with me here in the red. Read it together with me on the count of 3, 2, 1. The just shall live by faith. That's exactly right. The just shall live by faith. Now that's um, uh, kind of a uh, one of those things that maybe we say, hmm, I wonder what that means. Well, think about this word here. This word, the just, is speaking about those who are living by faith, but it, it describes them with this word just. Now, what does it mean to be just? Hmm. Hmm. Now, interesting, this word has the same idea as this word. This word right here that describes possibly you and me if we're living by faith is the same word that is used to describe God here. And this is it. It is being right with, with the Lord. It's the people who are right, who are righteous and they're true and they're, they're following the Lord. They're good people to make it, to make it really easy. The, the good people, the people who are following God shall live by faith. Now, we've talked about faith. We've talked about having that trust, having that belief, re relying on the Lord, right? But it says here that the just, the, the righteous people, the good people, the, the people that you and I want to be are going to not only have faith, but it says this, this word here, live by faith. What is important? What do you have to do to live? Everybody do this with me. We're going to take a big breath in. Ready? Here we go on the count of three. One, two, three. And let it you have to breathe. You have to breathe. Now, do you guys wake up in the morning and breathe just once? No, you continue to breathe, don't you? Actually, all of you are breathing right now. I imagine if you're watching hopefully. this, hopefully, yeah. You know what else you have? What is in here? Maybe you feel that. You can put your fingers here on your neck and you can feel what is that here. Oh, there, I feel it. It's a heartbeat. Your heart is beating again and again and again and again and again and again and again. It doesn't just beat once in the morning. It doesn't just beat once right before you go to bed or, or once when you were born. No, it continues. It keeps going. Your, your breathing continues. Your heartbeat continues. The blood is flowing through your body. It continues. Your mind is, is continuing. Why? Because it is living. It, it hasn't stopped. When it stops, if you stop breathing, or your heart stops, or your mind stops, you become dead. You've stopped. But here it tells us that we are to live by faith. And here is the, the truth, is that our faith must continue. 
Just like, just like your heart and your breath is living, your faith is living. You are continuing by faith. And so you don't, here's the thing is, maybe you're watching today and you've put your faith in Jesus Christ. That's amazing. But are you living by it? Or has it just been a one-time decision? If your breath was a one-time decision, you'd be in trouble. And the same is true with our faith. We need to live by it. And that's the same idea here. From faith to faith, it's building, it's growing, it's, it's continuing, it's living. And it ought to be something that is, is so deep in us that we trust and believe and have faith in God at all times, moment by moment. Okay, so we're going to add some actions to this. And the just, we're going to use the same action as for righteousness. Because do you remember, as Mr. Seth just said, the word there, just, and the word there, righteousness, sort of means the same thing. So the just, like this, that's what we're going to do. The just shall, and for live, remember we talked about continuing, and so we're going to do like walking, as if you're continuing on, like you're walking somewhere, talking about your life. The just shall live by faith. We're going to do our same action for faith. Okay, you got that? Mm -hmm. I think I got it. Let's do it from the top on three. Three, two, one. Romans, Romans chapter 1, one verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Lovely. That is good. We're going to have to good. go over it once more because I think so. even I messed up a couple of times. Oh, and I well. came up with the actions. That's all so. right. We let, let's try it again. And I want you guys really to think about this. And I want to ask this question. Are you living by faith? Are you living by faith? Maybe you haven't even begun to live in faith. Well, you need to take that very first step. We did the walking action, that very first step of putting your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Romans, Romans chapter 1, verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Excellent. Thank you very much for joining with us for this verse here. We hope that you remember it. Hello boys and girls and welcome to the prayer time on the Pioneer Bible Club. You know, I am so excited today. Do you know why? Because some of you have got in contact and you've sent in your prayer requests and it's such a joy to be able to pray for things that you want us to pray for. Remember, you can do that by going onto our website cchtrust.org.uk and submit a prayer request. And we've heard today from Olivia and she has asked us to pray for midwives across this country and I guess around the world really, right, Olivia? And she's asked us to pray for her aunt who's a midwife. Her name's Mel and she works in London, so we're gonna pray for her today. Thank you for sending that in. She's also asked us to pray for her auntie, her other auntie, Charlotte, who's expecting uh, two little babies soon. So let's pray for safe delivery there. That's a good thing to pray for, Olivia. Well done for sending that in. We've also heard from James. And James, I am so pleased that you're watching and I'm very, very pleased that you've asked us to pray for your friend Max and his mum that they will come to know the Lord Jesus as their saviour. That is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Keep it up, James. Keep up praying for your friends. That's a good thing to do. We've also asked, uh, heard from Daniel, been asked to pray for Daniel and some different things he sent in, praying for uh, his grandparents to know the Lord Jesus, his great aunt and many things. We're thankful, Daniel, you've sent that in. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these things to the Lord now in prayer. And you know, we do this, we pray to God the Father, and you know who we pray through? You know who gives us power and the ability to pray? You know what his name is? That's right, Jesus. Jesus Christ, in his name we pray through him. Jesus said, remember, I'm the way, the truth, the life. So let's pray today to our Heavenly Father through the name of the Lord Jesus. Shall we do that together? Okay, shall we pray? Are you ready? A, oh, you're getting good at this. B, very good. C, now remember when we say C, we go quiet, okay? We pray together, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do bring before you today these different prayer requests that have been made 
mentioned of to us. We think of Olivia and her desire to pray for her aunties and we pray for both of them, that you would bless both of them in their different situations. Help them both to know the Lord's help in these days. And we pray, Lord, for thy hand to be upon them. And Lord, we do also pray for James. And Lord, we're so thankful James has a desire to see his friends come to know the Saviour. And we do bring before you today Max and his mum. And we pray, Lord, that they would be saved. They would be one to Jesus Christ. And Lord, we also pray as well for Daniel. Lord, we're thankful Daniel sent us a, a long list of things to pray for. And we do pray for his grandparents and his different other family members that he's asked us to pray that they would come to know the Lord Jesus as their saviour. Lord, thou knowest truly everything. Lord, you know these boys and girls inside out and you know what's on their hearts and we pray that you'd help them to bring them to thee. Lord, we praise thee, we love thee, we thank thee now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today, boys and girls, on the Pioneer Bible Club's prayer time. If you've got a prayer request, do what Olivia and Daniel and James did. Go onto our website and send them through to us. And we will not just pray here, but we will continue to pray for these different things throughout the weeks to come. God bless you. Bye-bye for now. We are taking Camp Victory this year to the great outdoors. Let me introduce to you today our fearless team leaders. For the Timber Wolves. The Explorer, Zach Gillett. For the Mountain Lions. The Adventurer, Jared Clement. And for the Grizzlies, the pioneer, Jonathan McClure. Make certain that you do not miss this year as we take Camp Victory online for a year of exciting adventures that we have never seen as of yet. Sign up today at campvictory.org.uk and join us for the first full week of August for the most exciting year of camp yet. and girls thank you for joining me I'm right here in the middle of a forest and as you can see it's getting really dark out here but don't worry I've got my trusty backpack with me and all the things that I need but as you can see I'm, I'm getting a little bit cold out here you know I, I wonder what I can do oh I know I'm gonna find some wood and I'm gonna build me a fire if you wait right there I'll be just back Don't worry boys and girls, I found some wood and I think that this is going to be perfect. I think this is just going to be right to be able to start my fire. But, oh wait, I need one thing. Oh, don't worry, I know it's in my backpack. Just give me a second again. Ah, oh, here we go. I have with me a lighter. Now this lighter is a little fire that's going to help me make my bigger fire. Now remember boys and girls, don't try this at home, okay? Now you can see that this little fire 
is able to help me start a bigger fire, but I have to be careful because I don't want the fire too big, otherwise it will catch the trees on fire behind me. You know, it reminds me of a verse actually that we find in the Bible, and I brought my Bible with me too whilst I'm here camping, and it says in James chapter 3 and verse number 5, it says, Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Wow, this is interesting. You know what it says here in God's word? The Bible tells us that even our tongues, even though they may be very small, a little member of our body, did you know that it can create something that is far greater, like a small fire is able to create a bigger fire? So what is this verse telling us here? It's saying this, that we should be very careful with the things that we say. You say, well, I only told maybe a little lie, or I only said just one small thing that wasn't very nice. Did you know that that can grow? Just like a little fire, eventually it grows and grows and grows after time. Just like that, maybe that one small lie that you told, or that one small unpleasant and not very nice thing you said, did you know that can get worse and worse? I remember when I was a little child that there was a song I remember listening to in Sunday school, and it went a little bit like this. It says, be careful little mouth what you say, for there's a father up above and he's looking down in love. So be careful little mouth what you say. And you know, that Bible truth in the book of James can help us to understand this, to be careful with what we say with our mouths. Even though it may be very small, just like this small little fire, if it's not controlled, it can grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Let's use our mouths that God has given us. Instead of doing something unpleasant and not very nice, we can use that to praise God. We can use that to sing songs unto Him. We can use that to read God's Word. And even better, we can use that to share with other people the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I hope that you, boys and girls, will use your tongue for the glory of God. children, I found myself to be very lost. The last time we left you on the Pioneer Review, I thought I was making my way back, but now I'm stuck in the middle of these woods, and it's a bit concerning, and I think I need a friend. Thankfully, I've got some friends there that can help me maybe find the next clue. Do you see the next clue? Tick, what? Over here? I don't see a clue over here. Oh! You're right, there's another clue. Hold on carefully here. Yes, we have another clue. Maybe this can help us. Oh, yes, it's got a question. Well, you know, when you're lost in the middle of the woods, it's nice to have a friend. Well, there was a character in the Bible, from our Bible lesson, and he was considered a friend of God. Do you know who it was? Do you know who, who was that character that was mentioned in our Bible story? Abraham. Well done. He was a friend of God. And you know, God desires to be all of our friends. He's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Well done. Well, let's go on and see if we can make our way back today. All right, children. I've been led to this next area and I'm looking for another clue. I'm in the edge of the canal way here. I'm looking, do you see another clue? Below me. Oh, I don't see it there. Yo, here it is. Let's see. Oh, I've 
got it. It's another clue. All right. Here very carefully. I have another question. In our Bible verse that we've been learning this past week, what is revealed in our Bible verse from faith to faith? What is revealed? Do you remember? I hope you do. I need to find my way back. If you said, the righteousness of God, well done. All right, the righteousness of God is revealed. Well done, and I'm thankful that God is righteous because he is perfect. Well, let's go see if we can find our next clue and make our way back. Thank you. All right, children, our clue has led us to this location. I'm not sure. I feel a bit fenced in on this one, but I think it's around here somewhere. I'm just not sure. Have you got any ideas of where this clue might be? I haven't got a clue where it could be. What, where? I just don't see it. It's nowhere to be found. Well, you don't have to yell. I mean, whoa, it's right above my head. I tell you what, thank you very much. Well, let's see here. What? Oh, we have another question. We've been learning different characters from our heritage and there was a particular person named Eric Little and why would he not run an Olympic race on Sunday why would he not run an Olympic race on Sunday it was his chance to win what he'd been training for. Why would he not run on a Sunday? You think you know it? If you said because it was the Lord's Day and he wanted to honor and worship the Lord and we don't do sports on a Sunday, then well done. Eric Little took a stand for what he believed in God. And I hope you boys and girls will take a stand for what you believe to know to be true from the Word of God. Well done. Well, hopefully this is going to lead us to our next location. I'm so excited. I think we're getting a bit closer. Here we go. We'll see you next time on the Pioneer Review. He leadeth me. He leadeth me, O oh blessed thought, O oh words with heavenly comfort fraught. Whate'er I do, where'er I be, Still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, By his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, For by his hand he leadeth me. Trust and obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey.
Hi, my name is Tisha, and I'm from Birmingham, and today's scripture reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 48, verses 8 to 21. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons, and said, Who are these? And Joseph said unto his father, They are my sons, whom God hath given me in this place. And he said, Bring them, I pray thee, unto me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near to him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face. And lo, God has showed me also thy seed. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand towards Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand towards Israel's right hand, and brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched out his right hand, and lay there upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph, and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads and let my name be named on them, and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him, and he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people, and he also shall become be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And he blessed them that day, saying, In thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim and Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. May God bless the reading of his word. Well, we're looking today at the faith of Jacob. And the verse we're looking at in the Bible is found in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 21. Where it says, by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. I'm sure you've heard of Jacob. Of course, there's Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. That's it. He is one of the Old Testament heroes of faith. And in this great chapter of the Bible that you've been looking at, we find out that this man, Jacob, had faith. Now, sometimes when you think about faith, sometimes we think about big things that people do. And perhaps we think they have great faith. Do you remember Peter and John? Uh, they saw a man who could not walk. And although uh, the Lord Jesus had died, uh, had risen again, had gone back to heaven just a few weeks earlier. As they looked at this man, they said to him, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he did. Did they have great faith? Well, perhaps. But more importantly, they were trusting in the greatness of the risen Lord Jesus. It wasn't so much that their faith was strong, but the one they were trusting in who is strong. When I was a child, I had a poster, and this poster was on my ceiling, so when I lay down on my bed at night, I could look up and I saw uh, this poster. I used to love it because it had so many little details in it that I could keep spotting. And this poster showed a picture of the Broadway that leads to hell. 
and the narrow way which leads to heaven. On the broad way, there were lots of friends to see. There were parties, there were games, there was money. But on the narrow way, there were steep steps. There were bridges over deep canyons. There were lions roaring at the edge of the path. People who travelled on the narrow path usually travelled alone. As you've been listening to, to Pioneer Bible Club over the, over the weeks, uh, maybe you've thought about your life. Maybe you've been challenged to turn from your sin, to turn from the world and to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And perhaps you want to start on that journey. You want to head on to the narrow path. But you think, I'm just little. I'm just small. I haven't got great faith like Peter and John. How how will I keep up the, the, the Christian life when things get hard? Well, if you're thinking like that, that's good. Because you're doing something that the Lord Jesus called counting the cost. You're thinking about things seriously, which is good. But listen on today, because Jacob teaches us something about faith that will help you. Now, the first thing I want you to notice is that Jacob was dying. The, the writer to the Hebrews could have chosen lots of things to tell us about the life of Jacob. He, he could have told us about the time when Jacob wrestled with God in prayer all night. He could have written about how bravely he, he made up with his brother after they'd been apart for many years. But he chose to speak about Jacob's faith when he was dying. Jacob was 147 years old. Imagine that. And the Bible tells us that he was so weak that he couldn't get out of bed, that he couldn't see very well. He was weak, he was old, and he was dying. And yet God saw his faith to be so important as Jacob blessed his son and his grandchildren. Now, some people in this world think that old people uh, or sick people or, or people who can't give anything to society are not important, that they don't have any value. But God doesn't think that. And part of the reason is because God sees faith. Now, remember that when you see people perhaps at, at church again or at Sunday school that are a bit older, or maybe when you see your, your grandparents or great grandparents, remember that God values faith. But the lesson I really want you to learn today is, is this, that you may feel very weak, that you may feel that you don't have enough faith, but God sees faith and it's important to him. Remember the hymn? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Jacob was dying. But Jacob also got a lot of things wrong in his life. And if there was one word to sum up his life, I, th I would suggest it be this. Grace. Do you know what grace is? Grace is God's gift to people who don't deserve it. Jacob got many things wrong. You know, even his name. It carries the idea of deceit. You know what that means? It's like lying, tricking. Do you remember how he tricked his father and he tricked his brother so that he got the blessing that should have been his brother Esau's, but he got it for himself? Do you remember how he got those hairy skins and put them on his, on his arms so that his father, who couldn't see, would feel them and, and think it was his hairy brother Esau? He even told a plain lie. When asked, he said, I am Esau. That wasn't his name, was it? He told a lie. And many other things in his life that he got wrong. Many other things in his life he did that, that he sinned. Boys and girls, perhaps adults listening too, if we had to be good enough to get to heaven, 
none of us could get there. Have you ever told a lie? I'm sure you have. And the Bible tells us that no liar can enter heaven. But the good news is that the Bible says that while we were yet sinners, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God sent his son, the Lord Jesus, to die on the cross because we are not good enough. Do you think that God would have put his precious son upon that cross, on that awful, horrible cross with its nails and the pain and the suffering? Do you think God would have put his most beloved son upon that cross if we could get to heaven just by pulling our socks up or trying a bit harder or behaving a bit better? No, he did it because that's the only way. And we need God's grace. We need his gift, his gift to people who don't deserve it, people like you and me. But not only then was Jacob dying, not only did he get many things wrong, but we learn from his life that he was kept by God. Jacob's life was, was full of adventures, you know. You can, you can read all about it in the book of Genesis from chapter 25. He was often in danger from, from other people. And he lived on the run from his, his own brother. His uncle tricked him. And he lived in the land of Canaan where many people did not love God. It was full of adventures. And yet he was kept by God. Have you ever started something and not finished it? Perhaps some colouring or a, you're making something or a project and perhaps you forgot about it or you, you got bored or you said, oh, it's too hard. Well, the Apostle Paul says this in the book of Philippians, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it or complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. You see, when God works in your life, he finishes what he began. It's never too hard for God. He never forgets. He never stops caring. Uh, it's never too tiring for him. God finishes what he began. And so when God works in your life, when you turn from your sin and trust in Christ and are truly sorry, he will keep you till the very end. So you can start on that Christian journey. You can take that step of trusting Christ. You can be confident of keeping it up. Why? Because you don't need great faith. You simply need faith in a great God. Faith in a great Saviour. Faith in his death at the cross. Faith in what he has done. And then you can know that your God who has saved you will keep you till the very end. And there's some of the things we learn from the faith of Jacob. Coming up on Pioneer Bible Club, thank you guys for joining us. And today we are going to find out who our winners for the coloring contest are. And I hope you guys have been working very hard at it. Our coloring contest winners, we now remember every week you have a chance to download the coloring sheets, color them in, and then submit them for a chance to win. And in fact, we have another competition that is due today. So if you haven't submitted one yet this week, you can download that at the cchtrust.org.uk website, color it in, and submit it. Okay, now let's get a drum roll here for the eight and younger. The winner is none other than, drum roll please, See, maybe you guys aren't doing the drum roll with your mouth like that, but that's okay. Here we go. Real drum roll this time. There you go. The winner is Daniel Miller from London. Very good, Daniel. What a great job at coloring in those sheets. And the nine in order. Another drum roll, please. Very good. Give us a real drum roll. It's none other than Monica here. Very good. 
Look at these coloring sheets. These two know how to color things in. Very good. Now also, if you haven't done it yet, there's also a Pioneer revision right up there on the cchtrust.org.uk website. And we have some people who got 100%. And I'm going to list their names. You listen fast to see if you are one that got 100%. Their names are Ruth, Joel H., Nathan K., Isaac H., Tim S., Sadie M., Haddon M., Jeremiah H., Nathaniel P., Caleb, Phoebe, Joseph, Luke Z., Kezia, Ruth H., Rebecca H., Joel H., Esther, Lily P., Nathan K., and Olivia S. Very good job. You guys must be really paying attention. And I hope all of you are paying attention and try to do that revision. Okay, very good. Now, I want to give you guys one more really big, super important megalotronic reminder right now about memorizing the entire chapter of Hebrews chapter 11. Now many of you guys remember we have been working through this whole chapter of the Bible memorizing several verses at a time out of Hebrews chapter 11 and I hope that you guys are working hard on your own time not during the club but on your own time to memorize and to hide this passage of God's word in your heart. So I wonder how you're doing. Feel free to, to work hard and to send us a video of your practice if you want. Have your mother, your father, your guardian help you with that because we want to see how well you guys are doing at memorizing God's word. And we know the Bible tells us that God's word is a lamp. It's a light unto our feet. It leads us and guides us. And so this is so important. I hope that you guys are working super hard. Very good. If you got, if you, if you need a Bible, you can go up to the, the cchtrust.org.uk website, request a Bible. You can also go and submit a prayer request. And we hope that every single one of you will join us again on Sunday in the afternoon. Have a wonderful day. Okay, boys and girls, thank you very much for watching another edition of the Pioneer Bible Club. And Thank the Lord for a fantastic message by our dear friend, Mr. Jonathan. He's done a great job uh, opening God's Word and teaching us today. And I hope you are listening. And uh, perhaps you can take the things you've learned today and teach them to somebody else. Share them with somebody else who didn't watch today. How many of you will do that with me? Excellent. I'm glad to hear it. And I'd like to hear from some of you about how it, how it goes when you tell somebody uh, what kind of a response you get when you share this Bible lesson. Let's wrap it all up with a word of prayer, and then God willing, we'll see each other in just a few days. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for what we have just heard, and the songs that we've sung, and the things that our eyes have, eyes have seen. Help us not to forget them, Lord, but to uh, remember them and to keep them in our hearts. We pray especially, Lord, uh, for salvation. Oh, how wonderful it is, the most important thing on earth, to know that our sins have been washed away in the precious blood of Jesus. And I pray for these dear children. Father, please save each one. Work in their hearts. We pray for their fathers and mothers and carers. Lord, look after them and save them as well. And Lord, we pray that these truths that we have been a part of today will forever be a part of our memory. And I pray that we would grow in our understanding of thee. Give us a great week, the rest of the week, and bring us back together again soon. We love thee, Lord, and thank thee for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls, for taking part in today's Pioneer Bible Club, and we will look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you.